Hello students! It's me again, your magandang kusinerang teacher, Ma'am Curly Zay Palmin. Are you excited for our new Cook Amazing Lessons? Yeah! What are you waiting for? Join me as we build your knowledge in Cookery 10. Because life is too short for a pale food. We deserve a better food for a better mood. Welcome to Cookery 10. How are you today? I hope you are doing great. For our Cook Amazing lesson, we will discuss about Prepare soups for menu items. And for this quarter three week two objectives, Different ingredients and flavorings will be introduced to you. Specifically, this module will help you to select and assemble correct ingredients in preparing soups including stocks and garnishes, prepare variety soup recipes according to enterprise standards, and present and evaluate sauces and soup recipes in accordance with the criteria. Before we proceed to our Cook Amazing lesson for today, let us answer first our pre-test to know if you have a prior knowledge about our lesson for this day. Read carefully our directions and bring out your paper and pen and answer it. I will only give you 5 minutes to finish this test. Alright, after assessing yourself, let us have a short recap regarding our lesson last meeting. For the direction, identify the following type of stock in accordance with the ingredients used. Choose your answer from the given choices on the box and write your answer in your answer sheets. I will give you 5 minutes to finish your work. Refrain from looking at your modules and avoid erasures. Ready? Timer starts now. I guess you are now ready with our new lesson for today. Prepare soups for menu items. Now what is soup? The word soup comes from the French word soup or soup or broth, which further comes from the Latin word supa, which means bread, soup, and broth. It is based on stocks added with other ingredients for variety of flavors, consistency, appearance, and aroma. Soup is a refreshing, arom aromatized, and complete meal. It play a very, it plays a very important role on the menu and serves as appetizer to stimulate the appetite for the rest of the heavier foods to follow. There are different classifications of soups. We have the thick soup. We have the thin soup. We have the cold soup, we have the dessert soup, and the national or special soup. Let us try to understand them one by one. The first classification of soups is the thin soups. Thin soups are all based on clear, unthickened stock. They may be served plain or garnished with a variety of vegetables and meats. It is further divided into two categories, the past soup or clear soup and unpassed soup. To further understand the two categories of thin soup, which is the past or clear soup and unpassed soup, let us try to differentiate the two example picture below. 
So for the past or clear soup, we have here the consomme or the dish consomme. consomme. And for the unpass soup, we have here the dish nilagang baka or the broth and bouillon. So what is that consomme? The word consomme dish comes from the French word which means consume or finish. It refers to more complete soup than a stock or broth. It is a clear liquid that results from clarifying homemade stock and usually done with an egg whites. The best example of pass or clear soup is the consomme. Now, why is it it is the, be the best example for pass or clear soup? Because when we talk about pass or clear soup, basically, it is strained after the preparation with the help of the strainer or muslin cloth. Specialty of this soup is that it is simple, clear, transparent, flavorful, and without any solid ingredients, as you may observe in the picture. How about the unpass soup? So unpass soup is a contrary to pass or clear soup. The properties of this soup is same as of clear soup except for that this is not strained and has solid ingredients in it. The preparation method is same as well in the pass or clear soup and can be prepared from beef, veal, poultry, and vegetables. Next classification of soups is the thick soup. Thick soups have thicker consistency and fuller body than thin or clear soups. These are made thick with the addition of the thickening agents. Examples of mostly used thickening agents for making soups are rice flour, grains, and cornstarch. It is a soup that are thickened to provide a heavier consistency. Here are some examples of thick soup. Number one is the cream soup, which is thickened with white roux and finished with cream. Roux is a combination of flour and fats, and it is called white roux because it is cooked slightly to retain its color. They can be made with a vegetable cooked until tender, pureed, steered, and folded into soup. Next example of thick soup is the chowder. Chowder are hearty soups made from fish, shellfish, or vegetables, usually contain milk and potatoes, and then thickened also with a roux. Another example of thick soup is the velouté. The French word velouté translated into English which means velvety. This describes the finished textures and appearance of the soup. The principal thickening agent or the thickening element used in making a velouté soup is a blanc roux. A blanc roux is car caramelized slightly to give its darker blonde color or a velvety sauce, which may be flavorful or which may be flavored using different stock based according to the dish that you are going to prepare. The last example of big soup is the puree soup. Puree soups are made by simmering dried or fresh vegetables, especially high starch vegetables in stock or water, and then pureeing the soup. Puree are normally based on starchy ingredients. Best example of the puree soups are the pumpkin or squash soup, corn soup, bean soup, and carrot soups. They are not smooth and refined as cream soup but are heartier and coarser in textures and characters. Other classification of soups is the cold soups. 
cold soup is a variation on the traditional soup wherein the temperature when served is kept at or below temperature. So we have here the best examples of the cold soup. We have the gazpacho or a chilled cantaloupe soup which is based on a puree of cooked or raw ingredients brought to the correct consistency by adding fruits or vegetable juice as a liquid. And the last one is the vision swap, which is cold, thick soup, simply cream soup, served cold. So those are the, ex those may, those example may be unfamiliar to you because uh, gazpacho and vision swap are examples of national, uh, national soup na itidiscuss ko sa inyo later on. Another classification of soup is a dessert soup. And the best examples here in the Philippines of the dessert soup is the ginataan. Ginataan is a Filipino soup made from coconut milk, milk, fruit, tapioca, pearl, tapioca pearl, and served hot. Another one is the oishiru, a Japanese azuki bean soup. And we have also here the tongzu. It is a Chinese sweet dessert soup. So we are now here in the last classification of soup, which is the national or special soup. Specialty soups are distinguished by unusual ingredients or methods that are made and prepared by distinctive methods. So they are termed as national soup again. Soups that don't fit well into the main categories on uh, our classification of soups that are native to particular countries or regions is called as national soup here are some of the known soups in each country so we have here menudo for mexico we have the vision swap for, for france we have the gombo for the usa miso soup for the for japan Sinigang for the Philippines, Pu for Vietnam, and Egg Drop Soup for China. So, marami pa po tayong examples niyan. I just enumerate only the mostly na uh, maybe familiar to us. Alright. Now, let us proceed to the next topic under the preparing soup for menu items. The basic principles on how are you going to prepare it. So we have here five principles when making a or when preparing a soup. The first principle is that you need to start with a cold water. Why cold water? Most of the proteins, vitamins, and minerals dissolve in cold water. Part of the flavor comes from these components. And when you are using hot water, Hot water will lessen the flavor and nutritive content of the stock. That's why we need to use a cold water first. For the second principle, you need to understand the importance of cutting vegetables to appropriate size for the type of the stock. Alright, so the size of the cut helps the maximum flavor to be extracted. Example number one. A fish stock only simmer for a half hour or 30 minutes. So the cut should be julienne or thin strips or 1 4 inch thin to 2 to 3 inches long. Example number 2. A brown stock simmers for 4 to 6 hours and sometimes 24 hours so that could so so the cut should be 1 inch cubes so that the stock will have time to extract the flavor and will not apart after a long cooking. So you can see the difference. You can see how it, how is that important the correct vegetable cuts when preparing a soup. The third principle is that you need to select your protein base. It's either beef, chicken, pork, and fish. Why? Because all bones are washed, roasted, and blanched. Or blanched. Roasted for brown sauce and blanched for a white stock. 
Fourth principle is the correct summary. Gentle extraction aid in flavor and nutrition can, can affect the soup. So you need to use only the method of simmering, not boiling. Why, bo why not boiling? Because boiling can cause cloudiness through agitations of the ingredients. So it can also affect the color of or the textures of your soup. And the last principle is that skimming. When it comes to making a stock, keep the stock clear. Okay? The methods we use for keeping the stock clear or the method we use for removing the scum on the top of the stocks which contains impurities is what you call as skimming. That's why we need to use also the skimming method as part of our principles in preparing a soup. That's it. I guess you are now ready for our activity today. Answer activity 1 and 2 on pages 7 and 8. Please refer to your module. Read the direction carefully. Avoid erasures. Good luck! Remember, soup are based on stocks added with other ingredients for variety of flavor, consistency, appearance, and aroma. And soup is classified as thick soup, thin soup, cold soup, national or special soup. Alright, again, what are the different classifications of soups? Great job, students! Now, let's try to answer the check your understanding on your module. Refer to page 9 of your module. Please read the direction carefully. Avoid erasures. And for your post-test, read and understand the statement below. Choose the letter of the correct answer and write it on your answer sheets. Please refer to page 9 and 10 of your module. Avoid erasures. Good luck! And for your reflection for today, to further check your understanding towards the lesson, answer the following questions and write your answer on your answer sheets. 1. What are the things that you should consider when making soup? And number 2. What are the different kinds of sauce-based ingredients that can be used when making a soup? Please refer to page 10 of your module. Avoid erasures. Good luck! Thank you so much, students, again for watching today's video lesson. Once again, I'm your magandang kusinerang teacher, Ma'am Perlizay Paunil, saying... Life is too short for a failed food. We deserve a better food for a better mood. See you again and thank you and God bless.